Lesson 2.2, Task 1. Explore operations involving complex numbers. In this lesson, you'll perform operations with complex numbers. A complex number is any number that can be written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. You will be working with the same operations as with real numbers, and so their properties will also hold. The associative and commutative properties of addition apply to the complex number system. The additive identity property of zero will also hold. The system of polynomials is directly analogous to the system of complex numbers through the substitution x equals i. All right, so what is the sum of 2 plus 6x and 3 minus x? So we know that uh, the commutative property allows us to add numbers that are not side by side, so we could rearrange these to where it's 2 plus 3 and 6x minus x. And if we do that, 2 plus 3 is 5, 6x minus x is 5x, so 5 plus 5x would be the sum, okay? How are the commutative and associative properties applied? Select the term from the drop-down menu to complete the sentence. The commutative and associative properties are used to kind of combine or group like terms. All right, what would be the sum of 2 plus 6i and 3 minus i? So in the same sense, we could regroup 2 and 3 to get 5, and 6i plus negative i to get 5i. So 5 plus 5. 5i. What do you observe? The steps and results are the same with x and i, your imaginary unit. What would be a formula for adding two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di? All right, so it would be a plus c and bi plus di, so b plus d. Use the formula you wrote in part C to calculate 4 minus i plus negative 7 plus 3i. So it would be 4 plus negative 7. 4 plus negative 7 is negative 3. And negative i plus 3i would be 2i. Alright, do you get the same sum when using associative and commutative properties? Blank. So yes, I did. Yes, I get the same sum when using associative and commutative properties. All right, compare and contrast addition with complex numbers and addition with polynomials. Do your observations apply to subtraction? Yes, so we just added the opposite or added the negative. So the operation with addition works in the same way as addition with linear binomials. This would apply to subtraction as well. All right, that's all for task one. If you have any questions, please let me know. Lesson 2.2, task two. Explore operations involving complex numbers. Multiplication is a natural extension of addition. And so, the associative, commutative, and distributive property of multiplication also apply to the complex number system. The multiplicative identity property of 1 will also hold. What is the product of 2 plus 6x and 3 minus x? All right. All right, so let's come over to the side here. And we're going to do 2 plus 6x times 3 minus x. All right, so we have the product of two binomials, so we just use distributive property. So we're going to do 2 times 3, 2 times negative x, 6x times 3, and 6x times negative x. Remember, x times x is x squared. All right, then we can combine like terms. So let's put it in standard form, which means our highest exponent goes first. So negative 6x squared, then plus 
16x, so 18 plus negative 2 is 16x, and then plus 6 on the bottom. All right, so once we have multiplied these two binomials, we get the first term here. So that's the answer to A part. All right, so it says, how are the associative, community, and distributive property applied? Select the terms from the drop-down menu to complete the sentence. The properties are used to combine and group like terms. So here I combined and group these um, like terms. What would be the product of 2 plus 6i and 3 minus i? Alright, so if I have 2 plus 6i and 3 minus i, I'm going to do the same thing. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2i plus 18i and then minus 6i squared. Now, the difference this time is going to be 6. This is still going to be plus 16i. But this is going to be negative 6 times negative 1. Remember, i squared equals negative 1. So this becomes plus 6. So 6 plus 16i and then plus 6. So now I combine these two terms and get 12 plus 16i. So there is an extra step when your i is involved with the imaginary number because sometimes it can be rewritten. So what would the product be? 12 plus 16i. All right, what do you observe? The operations work in the same way with the substitution of x and i. So we did do the same thing, although we did have to reduce a little further with i. All right, what would be a formula for multiplying two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di? All right, so you could do ac, a times c, minus b times d, I guess, and ad minus r plus bc. That's your middle terms there. And then you would have an I as well. All right, use the formula you wrote in part C to multiply 5 minus 3I by negative 1 plus 4I. All right, so let's see what 5 minus 3I times negative 1 plus 4I. All right, so it says we are multiplying. That's why I have no sign here. So it says multiply this by this. So we multiply, we use distributive property. So we're going to have negative 5 plus 20i plus 3i and then negative 12i squared. All right, so I've got negative 5 plus 23i. We know that this is negative 1, oh, sorry, negative 12i squared. i squared is negative 1. i times i is i squared. All right, so this becomes plus 12. And then negative 5 plus 12, give me 7, plus 23i. So that would be my second answer here. And then it says, do you... Do you get the same product when using associative, commutative, and distributive property? I'm going to put yes, I do get the same answer. I get the same product when using these three properties. All right, compare and contrast multiplication with complex numbers and multiplication with polynomials. Multiplication is the same, but with complex numbers you would replace i squared with negative 1 in the product. Alright, so that's all for task 2. If you have any questions, please let me know.